Alpha Betas is an animated show created by the YouTuber Thanos Gaming. Basically, I do work. I'm Wildcat and Terrorizer. Each of them are respectively known as Evan, Marcel, Tyler, and Brian. After a small tease to this on the Wildcast podcast, we finally got the trailer to the show on 11th February. After which, we got a lot of exclusive things too. And to say I was not worried would be wrong. Because YouTuber projects such as these can be hit or miss. Until now, it has been mostly in the latter category. YouTuber movies and shows have a pretty bad reputation. I mean, this is where we got movies like Good Game and yeah, these. I have not seen them, nor do I have even any interest in watching them. But besides some like a hype with Markiplier, I have not seen any YouTuber movie or show that is even passable. So now that we got something like Alpha Betas, how is this one you may ask? Well, it's pretty good. Now I'm not going to say this is the next best thing ever or this is going to be the next Simpsons. Not at all. I mean, it's just a pilot. But it has created a new standard on movies or shows based around YouTubers. I mean, it is a step up from something like, I don't know, Smosh. Now I have been a fan of these guys for a long time. And I have been following them since grade 5. And from these interviews, I can actually tell that they liked what they made and enjoyed it a lot. So the plot of the show is about how the world's electricity is produced by people playing video games. So the government hired these 20-something gamers to go inside the game to fix bugs or stop hackers. In this particular episode, we see them going through a Red Dead Redemption style game to ensure that Area 51 remains powered. I'll start off with the positives first. I personally like the art style of this show a lot. It looks like a lot of shows that it is trying to have their sense of, like Rick or Morty or Adventure Time. Most of the comedy in this show is very good too. There were some jokes that I didn't like but overall all of them landed perfectly. I really liked the horse part with Wildcat. I'm pretty sure me and some others might have expected him to just somehow ride the horse. Sure it would have been maybe cool but it would not be that much development. So to have him just be stamped on by the horse was just funny. I was pretty pleased to see this and not some unearned character development. There are a few jokes like this across the episode and pretty much most of them land very well. The comedy timing between these main four are just perfect and they bounce off each other's personality. Talking about the main four, these guys have a very strong dynamic with each other. Whatever they are saying is not very crucial to the plot but these characters show their bond and how they work as a team through these interactions. This in turn makes it very good for the show as they actually look and feel like a group of friends working hard to get to their goal. A lot of similar shows lack this feeling and I think the reason behind that is that because these guys spend many years with each other, they just bounce off from each other and just talk to each other so perfectly. I especially like the characters being introduced in. Marcel's sarcasm, Vanos' personality, Wildcat's attitude and Brian's way of speaking fits very well into the scene. Now did you notice something that I said right now? That's right, I refer to them as their actual real names, which leads me into the negative of the show. As I said, I refer to them as Marcel, Vanos, Wildcat and Brian. And that is due to the self-insert nature of the characters. What I mean by that is that they act very similar if not exactly like their YouTube personality counterparts. That's why I refer to them by those names, cause that's what they feel like to me. It's hard to remember the characters names when they are so similar to the YouTubers voicing them. Heck, as I'm writing the script, I actually forgot what Marcel's character's name is. This indirectly kind of affects the show a bit, as in the show they are American characters hired by the US government. But you can actually hear Evan's Canadian accent in some scenes. It's I'm here against my will! Oh, I didn't realize! Sorry! And they even show Brian as Irish too. Oh man, here it comes. Uh, here what comes? Uh, He's about to go full Irish. Which makes the statement American, American heroes sound odd as half of them are not even from the US. And I'm actually wondering why they didn't just name their characters Evan, Tyler, etc. I mean, it wouldn't have really changed anything. 
But hey, this is probably just a nitpick, so moving on. Now, I did say that most of the jokes were very good, but only most, because there was some crude humor here and there. You know, the type of adult humor that you brag in school about when you are 12. And yeah, I was kind of annoyed by some of them. And even a few jokes sounded just not good and repetitive. So sorry to rush, but we have a Code Black. Oh yeah! I love Code Blacks! Oh, shocker! Code Blacks are the worst! Now I'm not sure how much creative control the YouTubers themselves had, but it seemed like they had a sort of hand in it. Because most of the humor sounds like it would be good in a YouTube video, but not in a TV show. This type of humor is included in many other shows and movies by YouTubers. And it just doesn't fit right. For a YouTube video, maybe, but not at all for a show. Because in a video, you can say something bad or unfunny and it would just pass off. But in a show, it is way more noticeable as you are not just trying to be funny, but also trying to have a plot and a story. So these types of jokes are kind of distracting, especially this one. Also, I think they should have had a little more involvement of the game itself. For example, in this pilot, the Red Dead game barely had an impact on the overall plot, except the horse part. You could have probably easily replaced it with GTA or something. Maybe I didn't catch it, but I didn't see anything somewhat even related to the Call of Duty or Red Dead in this episode, except the setting of them. Also one thing, I don't get the Bravo theme thing. I mean, couldn't they just kick out Alpha Team if they wanted? They say they get the job done, but if they want efficiency, just kick them out and replace them. It's not like they have any authority. I know they are trying to make a sort of overarching villain, but still. So yeah, this part doesn't make much sense to me in that way. So overall, should anyone else see this? Hell yeah! I'm so happy to see these guys setting up a new standard for the YouTube show and movie industry. Going to this episode, I was expecting it to be mediocre and not liking it, but surprisingly, I actually love it. And I definitely think it's pretty good. Unlike certain other animated shows, this takes full advantage of it being animated and has its hemiscope full unique, over the top and bizarro type. And I love it for that. I'm genuinely hoping this show can get greenlit and can be shown on something like Netflix or Hulu. So it can be picked up for more episodes as we have a solid foundation for a great show here. So if you haven't checked out the Alpha Beta pilot yet, click on the link that's in the description and go watch it. The more views it gets, the higher there's a chance of a full show of this coming out. And I hope to see more of these guys very soon.